but I can't get caught up in the love of the situation because that's going to always change. Yep. Well, here's a little deeper for you. No matter how many times it changes, it's got the same foundation. So let's look. Psalms 119, verse 133. Read it again. According to my steps in thy word, and let not any iniquity have dominion over me. Okay. Order my steps. We're talking about relying on God. So I got to be ready to do what? Follow. Follow. Huh? He says order. He didn't say ask. He didn't say if you feel like it. He said, David says, Lord, order. You set. Because whatever you set them to be, I have to follow. Even if I don't want to. Huh? There are times when I lie. I know y'all, every time God tell y'all to do something, y'all do it. I know y'all will never <laughs> fall short. But some of us are still working on some things. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. There are times where I don't fully follow. Yeah. Yeah. Let me go there. Yeah. <laughs> I may start out following, but along the way, I get skittish. Yeah. Right? right. Because I begin to watch what's going on around me. Mm -hmm. And before I know it, I'm totally watching everything around me and my eyes are off the road. They call that distracted driving. And so when I hit someone, I get a ticket for careless driving. But if I'm not careful, I'll get so used to doing it, it don't bother me. So then I get a ticket for reckless driving. <laughs> Which means, basically, I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. I know that I'm violating the laws of God. I intentionally get up in the morning with the intent to hurt somebody. That's reckless. Careless is I get caught up in a situation and I say something or do something I shouldn't say or shouldn't do. But you know what? Thanks God for the correction. Mm -hmm. I got that spiritual ticket to remind me, pay attention. That's what the ticket is for. And when I signed the ticket, they said this is not admission of guilt. This is just saying you understand. And the Bible said all things get what? Understanding. Understanding. It's up to you to decide whether you need to go and fight it or not. <laughs> but what do most of us end up doing? Paying the ticket. Huh? People always say, hey, look, I got this ticket, and they said this and that, but I think I can beat it. I said, well, if you think you can beat it. But understand now, if you lose, there is a court cost. Even if will you be win. added to the price of the ticket. <laughs> so you can either pay the 150 or you can walk out and pay them 350 Either way, still there's a pay. price. Got it. That makes sense? Got it. Got it. So we must be willing to follow. I'm going to add this. And I think this is important. Fully follow. This is a problem. I'm sure when you have people that come and speak with you and talk with you, and they're giving you half of the commitment, <laughs> and you have to redirect them to what you're doing is, is nice. However, you're going to need to fully, you can't take half your medication, you're going to have to take all your medication. And if it says take it at four, okay. say it again. You need to take it on time. So we have to learn that doing, serving through challenging times, we have to serve on time. <laughs> and we have to serve fully. Because the enemy will tell you, all oh, the people need you over there. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Better yet, the enemy will tell you, you don't need them people. Mm. Right? That's right. 
I don't know if they've ever done it. I'm going to keep researching. I'm sure if they ever did a survey of where people are in the midst of a challenge, how many people sit and isolate themselves? I was going to say the same thing. It happens so often. Go ahead. Even in the church and in the world, the, the enemy tries to get people off to themselves. If they, in, in the same way in the church, the people often, instead of them going toward <coughs> the people of God, they move from the people of God and they get to by themselves where the enemy can really attack. And that's the same way in the world. People... You, they, instead of them going to events or communities, mm -hmm. you know, things that they can really be around people, they move away from people. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, you know, you can't get people to see that that's not the place where you need to be. You need to be around people, especially people of God, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, so. <laughs> and we do, we do one of two things. We either isolate ourselves <clears throat> or we look for other people who feel as negative as we do. Which basically is just a group isolation. Yeah. Yeah. Make sense? Yeah. Instead of one person being in, in lockup, you got a whole floor mm -hmm. in lockup. Yeah. Because the conversation is not going to be to serve if I'm not hanging with people who are already serve. Right. I'm going to look for people who don't serve in order to feel okay about not serving. If I know I'm going to call Sister Palmer and I'm not serving, and she is, my conversation is going to probably be brief <laughs> or not at all. Right. But you know what amazes me is that sometimes even in ministry, we, we may leave out of it, but we will call people who are still in ministry. Say that again, Reverend. When we fall out of ministry... We will secretly reach out to people who are in ministry. Can I give you a Bible example? Isn't it amazes how Nicodemus waited till the night hour to go see Jesus? Mm -hmm. To ask him what he wanted to ask him because he wouldn't ask him in public. Wow. Why couldn't he ask him at 12 o'clock in the afternoon? He walked right down the street. He didn't want to be seen with him. And what he thought he might have got at night would be different from what he got with a group of people around. Right, right. So he got with him one on one and still got what? The truth. Hence the problem. We have to be willing to say just what we're saying at 12 o'clock noon is the same thing we can say to somebody at midnight. We all know about the witching hour. That's when folk are calling. I'm trying to see if you went around a broom with him. I said, take that broom. And as a song, an old song says, sweep around your own front door. Why are you trying to sweep around? Man? Get off that broom and just start sweeping. <laughs> Amen? Amen. So look further, it says here at 133, it says, Psalms 119, 133. He says, order my steps in what? Thy word. Hit thy, thy word. word. And thy word. So we're understanding we must fully follow the word. And from the word, since y'all like W, comes work, worship. See that? All that comes from the word. Huh? Willingness, all oh, that comes from the word. But what we revolve all this around and what we fall short again is we relate it to the word. That's why we have our struggle, guys. We base our work, our worship, and our willingness not from the word, from the work. That the first thing we bring up mm -hmm. is the word. But if you bring up the word, you too church. I'll be honest with you, I, I'm, I'm, I'm learning that. You know, I, I try not to talk too much from the word. Because the word is where my emotions lie. 
So it's better for me to just talk from what the words say. That way, when I do that, I don't have to pitter pat about what I got to say. We want to say what God said. Because the work will affect how you work, how you worship, and how willing you are to serve during challenging times. The times are not going to change, guys. The challenges are not going to change. So why should my servitude change? Huh? I used to always wonder. Yeah. Yeah. I used to always wonder yeah. 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 why yeah. they said yeah. that. But yeah. <laughs> it's right there in the book. Right there. You know, there's an old song that says, uh, Let the life I live speak for me. Speak for me. Mm -hmm. Let the work I've done. Speak for me, yes, sir. Oh, that's an old Baptist song, no? Yes, sir. Old Baptist song. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's supposed to. That's what it, what they're saying is that the word that I have accepted in my heart, let it speak for me. Because people, you know, you know, they appreciate you one day, sis, and three weeks later, they'll walk by you like they never met you, and you be like, wow. You can see the change in it. One minute, hey, Sister Palmer, how, how you doing? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's like that? <laughs> yeah. You got to really focus on your own motives Say why you do things. Because if you're truly doing it from your heart, it won't affect you. But it, if you, your motives are not right, it's going to hurt your feelings and you're going to feel some type of way. And then you feel in some type of way about them and they already feel in some type of way about you. <laughs> that comes too from a lot of people not wanting to be <clears throat> chastised and they want to do their own um, thing and there's no different from God chastising us from pastor chastising us if he if God chastises us and pastor don't chastise us he gonna get chastised worse because think about it, I'm only confirming what God should have already revealed to you mm -hmm. If God is not revealed to you that you're off track, mm -hmm. you fight with what I say. Mm -hmm. Or you've not accepted what God has revealed to you. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. Because the same confirmation I give you up here ain't no different from the confirmation I give you on the phone. Yeah. What's the difference? About to confirm... What God said about you getting a new house, new car, new hub, new wife, whatever, new job. Why is that not the same confirming word I would bring you and say, God said, you better slow down. Wait a minute now, hold on. You know, God talk to me and I got it. And I, you know, you know, don't try to stop my blessing. Oh, oh no problem. I'll back right on up. I'm just telling you what God said. After that, you do whatever you like. Do whatever you like. So then it says, and let not any iniquity. Okay? What is iniquity? Sin. Yeah. Uh-huh. Sin. Google it. I want you, I want you to get a little bit deeper. Sin is the, sin is the primary. However, the Bible even separates sin and iniquity. Yeah. Lustful things of the world. I ain't got my. I can't go. Palmer pulling it up. It says immoral or grossly unfair behavior. Okay, iniquity is the action. You can sin in your mind and not do it. Amen. Iniquity is the following act. Thank you. So serving through challenging times, I must follow fully follow fully and I must fix daily. Huh? What we say? And the reason you have to look at it daily is because he says, and let not any iniquity. Mm -hmm. Any. So that means that's going to be every day, pretty much, right, Milk? 
Word. Every day of your life, something's coming against you. Yes. Something's coming to play on your mind, and before you know it, you're acting out on it. Yes. I'm just talking about me. Me, me too. <laughs> and though I might be right in what I'm doing, I'm not righteous in what I just did. And that is where I lose the following with God. What I said was absolutely right. El, on paper, factual, it adds up, it is correct. However, because God told, didn't tell me to say it or to do it, I am now out of the following. Or I'm not following fully. Right? So if I'm not following fully, there's no way I can fix David. Hmm? I have to have a desire to follow fully so that I can fix David. This makes sense tonight. Yes. Because if not, I'm back to my old story again. Instead of letting the word supplement me, I'm letting the work. And the work is where my work, my worship, and my willingness apply. Sister Bell, I wonder if you mind getting up saying, well, Pastor, I don't feel, feel like a Sabbath day. I don't feel like it. What the word say? Do it. Are you turning it down because of the word or because of the work? The word. Huh? The word. Sister Johnson, you know, if you can just if you can come back for the second service, Pastor. Now, you know I don't do second service. <laughs> That's what the word say? Are we talking about the work? See what I'm saying? And we say this stuff boldly. Mm -hmm. So why do we do that? Why, why, do, why are we able to do that? Speak so boldly without being driven by the word of what we say. Why do we make that sound so easy? Anybody? Our own agenda. Only care about what affects us. Oh, Selfishness, carnal mind. Okay. Yeah, um, I, I think also is not enough of, of the word. You just if you're just doing the word when you come to church and right and that's it. Right. You know, and you ain't getting it you ain't doing it at home. Right. Then you know you, you won't get it. Struggle. Yeah. So you so you you're talking about it fully again. If I'm not fully look guys, we're built on repetition. Just like I can get up every morning and drink my coffee the same way. Mm -hmm. Or tea or whatever you drink. I could also fit in there 20 seconds to read some word, to pray, <clears throat> right? Amen. A lot of people come to church too with their issues from home, and they don't when they don't they don't come to church to relieve them. They come to church to get pity, and they leave with devil's stuff. Then therefore, whatever works for me for the love one hour. Let me go further than that. Golly, thank you, Lord. <laughs> what Brother Hicks is just saying is we come for relief. But we should be coming for healing. Amen. Mm. That's good. I just want the pain to go away. That's good. But I don't mean I'm healed. Right? Because pain can reoccur. Yeah. Right? You need some water now? Okay. Every now and then, you, you know you're here, but every now and then, don't, don't, don't your back remind you that you got a back? Yes, sir. Don't your legs remind you every now and then you got a leg? You know you say, you know what, I'm healed. I'm, God said, give up the walker. Walk. Do you still not feel the challenges? Oh, well, it's very challenging. But you still serve. Yeah. See what I'm saying? Pastor, I think sometimes we can get caught up in the work. Our everyday work. We get caught up in the work that we neglect the word because we overwhelm ourselves throughout the day, throughout the week with the work. And we neglect to get the word. And so on Sunday, because we haven't got the word all week, we come for the relief. Simply because we haven't got it all week. So now this is the one day for an hour and 45 minutes I can get word. 
And so once we get the word on Sunday, we go back to the work on Monday. And I'm not healed. And yeah. you're not healed. You're just relieved. I'm just relieved. Is that, that's what, that's what the book goes in. It's like a little, when I wake up, when I wake up, instead of saying, change the word, I just ever NBC. Yeah. Okay. I wake up ever since NBC every day. Every day. Instead of just waking up, turn on the, the Bible, the Bible. I tell you, I miss it. You see on shows, on shows, it's very fine. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 And let's be honest, some of the things we're dealing with, they don't heal us. They, yeah. they might give us some form of relief, yeah. but it's not a healing. This is why I tell people, no matter how much somebody paying you, it doesn't heal your struggle. Uh-uh. You feel it gives you some form of relief. That's why you get it in a bottle or a bag or a skirt tail or a pair of britches. This makes sense in a little while. For a moment in time, you just want to feel like everything's all right and you know it's not all right. But what's even scarier is I want to feel like everything's all right, and what's bothering me is I don't have the initiative or the spirit of the faith to want to do something about it. That's a scary place to be. And so I'm going to obviously look at what? Other areas and other people who have something with me and what I mean. You know? That's why when I go to Sister Farmer for counseling, I'm gonna out counsel the counselor. Wow. Huh? I used to love to watch that Soprano movie. And really the most most effective part to me was when he would go in there and see his his counselor. Yeah. And she would sit there, and he would sit there, and she wouldn't say nothing. And he didn't say, if he had to start everything. And the first thing he would do is he would attack her. And she would just sit there. And she would say simple things like, well, why do you feel that way? And he would kind of give her that impression of, ain't nothing wrong with me. You know what I mean? I'm just doing this to do this. But he needed that. Because he never, he didn't have to go to her. But he found a way to go to her. But think about the life this man was living. They were killing people. They was running drugs. He had wives, girlfriends. He had his own people coming against him. He had, he was trying to be a public figure. He had a lot going on, right? And we're talking about serving during challenging times. If we're not fully following God, we cannot fix daily what's wrong with us. And so we'll get comfortable with relief, but we won't get no healing, God. And one of the most saddest things in life is being the house of God, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. After God bless you, living you 90 years. And all you ever got from God was relief. And you never got healed. Think about that. Gain all that financial stuff and you still broke. Mm-hmm. Got took all the prescriptions you could for relief, but you never got healed. Serving. Doing challenging times. Let's go to the back to 133. Psalms 119, 133. We're about to close out. Psalms 19, 133. Serving during challenging times. Did everybody get a handout? Yes. Anybody not get one? Okay. I'll be checking on the T. I know you did. He says, order my steps in that word. He says, follow me fully. Follow me through the word, not the work. Because the work, the worship, and the willingness is all based off the word, not the work. God deals in quality. We try to find it through quantity. 
Well, everybody can't gig it every Sunday like you, Pastor. Yeah, but when you're here, you're not performing. <clears throat> that has nothing to do with how much you're here. It's what are you doing when you are here? Are you making a way? Are you making some changes? Or are you easily distracted by simple things that go around in the world? It happens. Life. One of the, one of the most colorful things I can learn about my job was, don't take none of that stuff personal, man. You people don't know you. They don't know you. They just see you as a law enforcement officer just like everybody else. White, black, Hispanic, it don't matter. They got a problem with position. They don't know the person. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. So it's the same thing in the, in the spiritual role that God has given me. I don't take nothing what these people say and do against me. It's part of the deal. I signed up for that. And if I can't take it, then I should have took the position. And some of us are taking positions of saying we accept the Lord Jesus as our Savior and as our Lord, but we can't handle it because we take it personally. Mm. Well, you cannot be a Christian and not have oppression. <laughs> it's in 66 points. We're not the people of God continually going through something all the way through the Bible. Yeah, yeah. So why would it stop once you signed up? Maybe <laughs> <laughs> it's me. Tell your neighbor, fix that. Fix that, that Hicks. So the last part says, and we, and we talked earlier, <laughs> sin and iniquity. Sin can be the thought, but iniquity is the actual action. Wow. Right? The Bible says just the forming in your mind is what? A sin. <clears throat> right? But to follow through with it is the iniquity. Hmm? But I can form it in my mind and still get back in the principle of God and say, Lord, look, you know. And not saying you couldn't get back in God with the act. The problem is, how does it affect the person you did it to? So now you got two people you got to pray for. Because <laughs> now I just stumbled somebody. And though may I might be able to get out of what I did with and out of out of my sin and my iniquity, that person now becomes a person of iniquity. And they just do it to somebody else. And they just do it to somebody else. And they just do it to somebody else. And before you know it, the whole church, everybody doing it to everybody. Mm -hmm. Huh? When you look up the word brothel, there's a place where everybody's doing everything to everybody in a simple manner. But it's all in action. In the spirit world, in a church, we can all be attacking each other and hurting each other in the spirit world. And that's when the Lord said it becomes a den of thieves. That's when God begins to say that this is not acceptable. So the last part says, Psalms 119, 133. He says, have dominion over me. David says, order my steps in thy word and let not any iniquity. Then he says, have dominion over me. Huh? So now we're talking about favor. Consistently. You got to know that when you're serving through a challenging time, that if I follow God's word fully, not the work, the word, right? It allows me to fix daily what's wrong with me. Not through relief, but with the spirit of appealing. I need more than the aspirin. I want the headache gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't just want it gone between yeah. the four-hour period of taking the aspirin. <clears throat> I want God to fix it fully. But in order to do that, I must be willing to follow the directions that are given to me fully. Can't take half the pill if it says I have to take the whole pill. You see? And by that, I now have what? Favor. 
that means that no matter what has come over me, though it may have a presence, it will not have any power. See, the struggles we have, guys, is we get caught up in what's before us instead of who's for us. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Oh my God, I got all this stuff and all this is going on. I don't know what's going to happen. And, da, 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 da. and God's saying, We've been here before. Don't you let me? <clears throat> let me just stick to the plan. That's what we stumble. Jeremiah 29 11 says, What? Oh, I know the plans I have for who? You. you. But instead is, I know the plans I have for me. Huh? Because his plan for us is always going to bring you down the road to help somebody else. The spirit of the enemy will tell you, you can do it all by yourself. He ain't no help. You don't need anybody to help you. You don't need anybody to tell you anything. You don't need anybody to give you direction, protection, correction. You just do your own thing. And then not give for when. And we're all going to get there one day. When you're sitting and your body can't do what it used to do, you can't see like you used to see. And all you're going to have is memories. You don't want those memories if you're not fully following God. If you're not letting God fix you. Because really we're talking about the fixing of your spirit. The body is going to pass away. The Bible has shown us many, many times that death is a natural thing for the body. But the spirit lives on. And if you're having trouble believing that, then you have to ask yourself, am I, have a, am I misinterpreting what my conversion really is? Am I just going because auntie went to church? Am I just going because my uncle went to church? Am I just going because I got tired of my daddy asking me did I go to church on Sundays? I just kept going and kept going. Yeah, I went to church, but I did not fully follow. I did not ask God to fix me daily to heal me. And I did not accept the faith that he had over my life that I could bless other people on a regular basis, consistently. Not just when I get a little income tax money or not just when it's Christmas time. You got all year long to bless people. Mm -hmm. All year long. You shouldn't have to wait. Let the Spirit of God work in you today. Amen? Amen. Anybody have anything to add? All right, put your hands together and enjoy something.